So far, in terms of extreme cloud IQ, we've only discussed the RF part of the wireless network when we were talking about cooperative control protocols. And we said the RF challenges in terms of channel selection and power are solved and are addressed by those cooperative control protocols, namely ACSP or the auto channel and power selection protocol. But how do you configure parameters for that protocol? What if you want to do something static? What if you want to manually control uh, or you want to configure that protocol to run differently for different environments? Well, that's when you need to use radio profiles. The uh, radio profiles will determine how your well, radios on the access points are configured. And you configure or you apply radio profiles to, access, to an access point or a group of access points or to a location using something called a device template. And a device template is another very powerful object within Extreme Cloud IQ because it will share or it will distribute same configuration to groups of devices. In terms of APs, we're configuring radio profiles, we're turning radios on and off. Um, and in terms of switches, we're then configuring ports, port types, uh, VLANs, and so on. So device templates are very powerful objects that will be used to configure multiple physical devices and their interfaces across uh, a floor, across a building, campus, or across multiple deployments across the globe. So in terms of radio profiles, we'll be looking at an access point or an AP device template. And an AP device template really does uh, two things. So it either configures the physical ports of the AP uh, on the Ethernet side. Uh, we will be configuring a management, a management VLAN, native VLAN. And on the Wi-Fi side, really we're configuring the Wi-Fi 0 interface and the Wi-Fi 1 interface. The Wi-Fi 0 interface in Extreme Wireless Cloud AP world means the 2.4 or the software selectable radio interface. And the Wi-Fi 1 interface is always the fixed 5 gigahertz radio. In terms of the Wi-Fi 1 interface, you really only have one option, which is assign the corresponding radio profile. In terms of the Wi-Fi 0 interface, there's a little bit more flexibility. So the first thing is, again, you can assign a radio profile for Wi-Fi 0. Um, this applies when this AP is running in a static 2.4 or a static 5 gigahertz mode. But then there's something else. We discussed dual 5 gigahertz APs and the dynamic nature of how the ACSP algorithm actually selects either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz and then can dynamically switch back from one to the other. And this Wi-Fi 0 interface or this radio can have another profile assigned, which is, which is optional. You can use static 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz assignment, but if you do decide to use a, a dynamic assignment, you use something called an SDR profile or software defined radio profile. And what that does, it can override that Wi-Fi 0 radio profile with a dedicated 5 gigahertz or dedicated 2.4 gigahertz radio profile, and it can dynamically switch between them, which creates um, a very, very flexible type of deployment and it gives you a lot of power when it comes to controlling and deploying high density networks without having to manually go in and configure everything yourself. So Wi-Fi 0, a little bit more to, more to configure. Uh, Wi-Fi 1, well you just configure one radio profile. However, radio profiles themselves have a lot of different settings you can tweak. What we've tried to do is the default radio profiles that we roll out are configured with what we consider to be the best practice settings across the largest, largest possible number of deployments that we, can, we could find. So the, the radio profiles that you find in there by default should work okay uh, for large number of deployments. However, you, if you want to tweak them to your own particular deployment, if you want to tweak them for, to a particular building floor, to a particular deployment, um, you can go in and create your own or tweak the existing ones. And that's what we're going to look at in the next couple of sections. 
When we discussed cooperative control protocols, we said they work out of the box. As long as the access points are the members of the same hive, as long as they use the same hive key and they can talk to each other, uh, they will be able to negotiate or they will be able to determine what, what the correct or the best channel and the best power for each of their radios is in, in that, that deployment. By default, every AP runs the cooperative control protocols and it runs the particular protocol that takes care of the uh, channel and power selection called ACSP, Auto Channel Selection, Auto Channel and Power Selection Protocol. And by default, when the APs power up, when the radios power up, the, that protocol will take some time and scan through all the possible channels, gather information about the neighboring access points, your own, so the access points are a part of, your, part of your deployment and other access points. And it will also look out for channel utilization, interference, and depending on all of those parameters, it will then determine and coordinate with all the other APs, well, your APs in the area, it will determine what the best channel is. It will also determine what the best power setting is for each of the two radios on the AP. And it works the same way for 2.4 and it works the same way for the 5 gigahertz uh, radio. The second part of ACSP, of the Auto Channel and Power Selection Protocol, is its dynamic nature. So not only does it run on boot uh, when the radios power up, it also runs either continuously or you, it, you can run it, um, you can run the measurements continuously, but you only implement change at scheduled intervals uh, or at during specific times of day. And the reason why these controls are there is because in some environments if you have dynamic ACSP channel and power selection turned on all the time and allow the protocol to change channels all the time, if there's really bad interference, well you may have a cascading effect of APs changing channels all the time. So by default we will implement channel and power changes, um, specifically power changes, during specific times of day because we don't want to interrupt or cause any cascading effects to the, to, the, to the channel plan. The decision for a channel change is usually based on the amount of interference presence on the channel and when the amount of interference or the amount of negative effects of, the inter of interference reaches a cer certain threshold then the ACSP will trigger a channel change. Let's look at the internal workings of ACSP by looking at a individual access point. And what you see in here is an output from an access point uh, and it's an output of how that access point sees the, its RF environment. And what you'll see is for each channel you have something called channel utilization cost. Um, and there's multiple different costs associated uh, with each channel the access point measures. And obviously, the access point will use that cost calculation to select the best channel available. And it will maintain a table of channel costs. Now, the most important thing to note here is the access point will measure channel utilization. So how much traffic is going on in the channel? How busy is that channel? It will measure the uh, TX, so how much utilization is caused by transmitting uh, transmitting traffic to the channel from the AP, how much traffic is caused by receiving uh, traffic from other devices and how much or what percentage of the traffic is actual interference. It will also take keep track of CRC errors, so any sort of transmissions that have gone wrong and it wasn't able to decode. It will then build a, a cost table of all the channels and the channel with the least cost will always be selected. And there's other uh, considerations here as well. So do we have neighboring access points? Do we have channel overlap? Uh, are we using high power? Are we using low power? And then also the cost will be further increased if we detect a radar blast on this channel and more on radars and DFS uh, in some of the later topics. And um, you can see these details if you go to the access point CLI and do show ACSP channel info. So that will give you more details around how the access point sees its RF environment um, and how it evaluates each of the channels uh, that it is seeing and measuring. So 
Let's take a look at the example on the screen and what it's telling us. If we look at channel 100, uh, which is the one that we're displaying, uh, we see that the channel utilization, the CU, is 9%. Transmit utilization is 0%, so there's currently nothing going on from the AP perspective. There's 4% interference, which is the IU uh, part of that line. And the CRC, or the amount of transmissions that we see um, have been unsuccessfully decoded, is 3%. The next section shows us neighboring access points, so our own access points. And you will see that uh, currently we're seeing three additional extreme wireless cloud access points. Um, the more neighboring access points you see, uh, the uh, higher the cost is going to be. And moving on, we look at the power of the access point. And when you look at the power, there's um, two things that come into play. One is the actual power output. The other one is channel bandwidth. Um, the access points will be penalized if they use wider channels. So the wider channels you use, the uh, more penalty or the higher cost is associated to the channel. And that cost gets added to the overall channel cost of this uh, channel, which makes it less likely to be selected. So the higher the cost of a channel, the less likely it is going to be selected. And finally, we have the radar cost at the end. So if there was a radar blast on this channel, uh, by, um, uh, by rules of um, implemented by uh, DFS, dynamic frequency selection, we have to move away from this channel. So the offset or the penalty that this channel would have would be the maximum penalty. And this channel would no longer be suitable for selection for whatever the period of time of that radar blast being present uh, on the channel. And this is how ACSP decides which channel has the lowest cost, and the channel with the lowest cost is the one that's going to be selected.